These deepfake scandals are getting more and more disgusting by the day. And some of the reactions to the news are just not it. I don't know what the hell is happening over at the Dallas Zoo. We've got people faking their deaths. We're gonna talk about all of that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show. So buckle up, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. Starting with the news that every single day we're seeing AI deepfake porn becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Right, well, we have been talking about this for a while now. There is a massive spotlight on the situation because what just happened in the past 24 hours? Right, there's this new disgusting, disturbing controversy involving a created by the name of Atrioc, as well as a whole slew of very high profile female streamers. Also, don't worry, to fully understand the story, you do not need to know who these people are and I'll give you the, the needed background. Right, so this whole situation starts from a small clip from a recent stream that Atrioc did. What time is it where I am? What time is it PST? Now for you, that may have seemed like a super random clip, though others may have noticed we intentionally blacked out part of the screen. And that's because in this moment where you're seeing all these random tabs open up, a number of users paused that moment and found that he had actually opened up a site that hosts deepfake porn of famous streamers. Some of which Atrioc actually knows personally or at least his colleagues with in the community. Or some new deepfakes of streamers were even seen in his browser, but also the site hosts plenty more vile crap with other content creators as well. So you had tons of people saying things like, as an Atrioc fan, this is incredibly disappointing. Hang for AI AI deepfaked porn of your friends and colleagues is fucking gross. Especially after knowing that one of his friends has paid thousands to remove deepfake porn of herself from the internet. He fucked up horribly. With that last part referring to the fact that, yeah, at least one female streamer that's been involved in this situation opened up about previously shelling out tons of money to get this kind of stuff taken down. And so we saw Atria giving an apology on stream, saying that he was embarrassed, that he knows that it was wrong, and that he's mad at himself. Saying he just did this one time, that it's not part of a pattern of behavior. Also claiming that he's been reading about AI content a lot lately, which is part of how he got here. And I was... <sighs> I just feel so embarrassing to me. But I was on fing Pornhub, dude. I was on a fing regular ass normal website and there was an ad. There's an ad on every fing video for this fing. So I know other people must be clicking it because it's on every fing video for a fing deep fake thing. And then I click it and I'm fing in this fing rabbit hole. And I, I don't know. I got morbidly curious and I click something. And I, and I, it's just fing, it's, it's gross. Is gross and I'm sorry. With his saying he feels horrible that he let people down, that he regrets it, that he does not support this kind of content. And while we didn't see him specify this on stream, you do have some sharing what looks like a Discord message where he says that the video that he watched was not as someone that he knows. And that the images that people saw of streamers on his tab were from a default preview screen. But also that Discord was locked so we weren't able to verify personally or see more of the context there. So I can't 100% confirm that that is really the case. Now with this, of course, you did have some chiming in, seemingly minimizing the situation, saying whatever, it's weird, but it's just porn. But in general, the backlash was absolutely massive because it was clear that he saw those explicit images of fellow streamers in at least some capacity. As well as he did admit that he watched some form of deepfake porn, which is often made without the permission of the person being deepfake. Which is why you had so many people saying things like, it's crazy to see the amount of people excusing Atrioc with the words, it's just porn. And adding, it's fake porn using the faces of people who never made the porn in the first place. Never consented to be used in porn. His colleagues, his friends, who I repeat, did not consent. And people adding all love for every single female streamer on the disgusting website. No one should have themselves be put on a deepfake porn website without their consent and it's fucking disgusting at the men who are making light of this shit. Fucking despicable. And with this, we saw Cutie Cinderella, which, uh, by the way, as you may have noticed in this story, I, I feel like I'm trying to jump through a lot of hoops and go out of my way to not name all the people that are involved in this story. But to properly cover this and, and convey why this is such a big deal, it felt very important to include Cutie. Because not only is she one of the streamers who has been dealing with explicit deepfakes on that site, she's been very outspoken in general, but also spoke out regarding this instance. Going live for a few minutes yesterday to speak publicly about how brutal it's been to constantly be exploited this way. Constantly Constantly worrying about these kinds of massive violations. Fuck the fucking internet. Fuck the constant exploitation and objectification of women. It's exhausting. Fuck Atrioc for showing it to thousands of people. Fuck the people DMing me pictures of myself from that from that website. But they're also going on to condemn deepfake porn in general. If you are able to look at women who are not selling themselves or benefiting off of being seen sexually. They're not benefiting, they're not selling it, they're not platforming it themselves. If you are able to look at that, you are the problem. You see women as an object, and it should not be a part of my job to have to pay money to get this stuff taken down. It should not be part of my job to be harassed, to see pictures of me nude spread around. It should not be something that is found on the internet. And with this also adding that she's going to try to go after the person who made this website. I promise you. 
With every part of my soul, I'm going to fucking sue you. And later adding on Twitter, the amount of body dysmorphia I've experienced in seeing those photos has ruined me. It's not as simple as just being violated. It's so much more than that. And in response to all of that, we saw tons of people rightly supporting her. Thanking her for being so open and vulnerable about this to raise awareness of a problem, especially, especially in the face of any time a woman speaks up about this, there, there's so much disgusting vomit that gets, that's it's tossed around at them. Which also brings us to the response that has gotten so much attention and that that is of Ethan Klein and his podcast, the H3 Podcast. Right, because Ethan and his team, they're watching through the video. They then proceed to play a version of the Christmas song over her talking. Ethan's trying to cover up a laugh. There are fits of laughter. People kind of like having their hands over their face. Why? What is going Something, on with you? I'm sorry. Don't, don't mind me. You guys are crazy. Why did you do that? Zach, what the f***? Bro. <laughs> when you watch just that, it, it's a really disgusting, disturbing moment. And during this, he, he ends up kind of rolling off camera. And, and then when he comes back, he does say that he supports Cutie Cinderella, also trying to uh, address his laughing fit. I'm sorry about the, this. you know what, you guys, it's not funny. And I'm very sorry about that. Zach's a fucking psychopath and played the chestnut song. And it just... <clears throat> you know what I mean? We then see the team have some crosstalk about whether or not the song was played intentionally or accidentally until Ethan fessed up and said that he actually sent a Discord telling Zach to play it. With him then uh, apologizing again. I was listening though, and I'll say this, I'm 100% support her. I'll even, do I want to donate to the cause. If she's founding a lawsuit, I want to support her. With him then continuing to say that he shouldn't have laughed at something so serious, but uh, that has not stopped the backlash from pouring in. With people saying things like, women's pain can never be taken seriously, can it? You're disgusting. Others calling them ridiculous fucking heartless losers, saying this is the true reality of, quote, ally influencer men. People saying they were a big fan until they saw Ethan and the crew laughing at cutie Cinderella's trauma. And yeah, I will say, uh, seeing any responses like this, uh, in incredibly disappointing. Because I think if you look at the situation, like it's a generally understood thing of like, oh, this is f kind of fucked up at the very Release. And then when you have one of the women, you have one of the, the victims of this situation opening up and telling you how this is impacting them. I think it's important to try to listen and empathize. And I, I, I really hate when it comes to stories like this, that for, for some people you have to be like, well, imagine if it happened to your your, your daughter, your, your sister, your mother, would you still be so blase or joking about it? You know, I talk about this not knowing if, you know, I'm covering it in the best way. I'm trying to do it ethically. I think it's important to raise awareness on this. Otherwise nothing fucking changes or happens. But yeah, you know, that, that's the story, some of the fallout, some of my opinion, and I'll pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts with this whole situation? And then, yo, what the hell is happening at the Dallas Zoo right now? It's such a weird mess, and it has been for over the last month. Starting with a clouded leopard going missing a few weeks ago after the staff found a tear in the enclosure, the zoo not opening that day, and the leopard Nova remaining missing for hours, though she was later found unharmed in the late afternoon near her enclosure. However, police determined that the tear in her enclosure was actually made intentionally, and so they launched a criminal investigation into her disappearance. And then the next day, similar damage was discovered at the habitat for the Langer monkeys. And then a week later, an endangered vulture was discovered dead under suspicious circumstances, with a zoo staff saying the death didn't appear to be the result of natural causes. And now, in addition to the police investigating that, two monkeys have gone missing. The habitat of the emperor tamarind monkeys having an intentional tear in it as well. Zoo staff saying the monkeys would likely stay close to their habitat on their own accord. But after combing the entire campus with zoo staff for the missing monkeys, police determined that they were actually taken. Dallas PD today putting out a photo of this man asking for public help in identifying him and saying detectives are looking to speak with him regarding the missing monkeys. And actually, in the zoo's defense here, they haven't been idle while all this is happening. Right after the leopard situation, they added cameras, they doubled overnight security guards. But ultimately, that's where we are. We essentially have no answers, and it feels kind of like we're waiting to see what animal goes missing or dies next. And then, it's time for a snack break, thanks to the delicious sponsor of today's show, Catalina Crunch. You beautiful bastards know I enjoy a tasty snack. So it makes me so happy to share that Catalina Crunch has a new limited edition crunch mix flavor, honey mustard, and just in time for the big game. Their snacks are packed with fiber and protein, and honey mustard is no exception. It's got five grams of fiber and eight grams of protein in each serving. And they're listening. Honey mustard was the number one requested flavor from fans. And knowing this was a limited edition, I stocked up quick. And I got to tell you, hands down, this is my new favorite flavor. It crushes my salty, savory cravings. And because it's packed with plant proteins and fibers, it'll leave you feeling satisfied longer. This mix is a must have, whether you're on the go or hosting the big game. So treat yourself and your friends to some honey mustard this week by going to catalinacrunch.com slash DeFranco and enter code DeFranco at checkout to get 15% off plus free shipping on any Catalina Crunch snack or subscribing at an even larger discount. This is the best deal available. So be sure to take 
take advantage of it before I take it all. And then, a woman in Germany appears to have just come back from the dead. Or reportedly, there was this 23-year-old beautician who was found dead in her car last August, her family identifying and mourning her. However, some questions started popping up during the autopsy, some things weren't lining up. And as it turns out, the victim wasn't the beautician at all, but rather a blogger from Algeria. And as far as, well, how could you confuse the two? The two women reportedly looked very, very similar. She was essentially a doppelganger. And that, as it turns out, was very intentional. Because our beautician, who everyone thought had died, was actually alive and well in Bavaria. So here's what happened. You had this beautician scouring through Instagram for a week, looking for a doppelganger, reaching out to a ton of women who looked like her and trying to get them to meet up using various false pretenses. With her ultimately convincing the Algerian beauty blogger to meet her, reportedly promising a cosmetic deal. But when they met up, the beautician and another person allegedly killed her and staged her body in such a way that she would be found and identified as the beautician. But the authorities ended up actually detaining these two back in August after discrepancies arose during the autopsy. They're also still in custody, and as far as why the hell would she do this, prosecutors are claiming that the beautician killed this woman to fake her own death and escape a family dispute. Now, the investigation is still ongoing, the murder weapon has yet to be found, but the prosecutors claim that the evidence here is overwhelming, and these two face life sentences if they're convicted. And then, George Santos is finally taking responsibility for all of his lies. If taking responsibility means literally doing the barest of the bare minimum. Right, because this morning, news broke that the new representative told his colleagues that he will be temporarily stepping down from his committee assignments as he faces multiple investigations and calls to resign for lying about basically every aspect of his life. That decision was also later confirmed by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who himself faced a ton of criticism for even giving Santos those seats in the first place. And McCarthy telling reporters that Santos had brought up the idea in a meeting the two had last night, saying, I think it was the appropriate decision that until he could clear everything up, he's off committees right now. Santos himself also saying that, telling reporters, I made a decision on my own that I thought best represented the interest of the voters. But also, I mean, it's, it's honestly hilarious that he's like, ah, oh, I want to do what's best for my constituents. When literally, just today, polling in his district found that nearly 80% of his voters think he should quit, including 71% of Republicans. This fucking clown. Also, Democratic lawmakers have renewed their calls for Santos to resign, including fellow New York Representative Richie Torres, who said in a statement, why is he stopping there? Half measures like voluntarily taking himself off his committee assignments are not good enough. He's a disgrace today and he'll be a disgrace tomorrow. He should resign from office immediately. And that was echoed by others who argued this is far from the accountability he and the Republican Party should be taking. Especially because Marjorie Taylor Greene was stupid enough to tell reporters that the decision for Santos to leave his committees was in part because McCarthy is trying to remove Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee but may not have enough votes. A move that Santos, who clearly has literally no understanding of irony, supports because he believes, quote, she doesn't deserve a seat in the committee. Sir, please shut the fuck up. You are the least serious person in Congress, which is saying a lot. Have you seen everyone there? Motherfucker somehow has the land speed record for lying. But ultimately, we're gonna have to wait to see what happens next because, you know, there's the, the federal probe into his campaign finances. Got to see how that does. Uh, also, the local investigations into the lies about his background. How's that going to pan out? As well as, honestly, any other probes that emerge, especially because it seems like every day there's another lie that comes out. Like, I mean, just yesterday, the Miami Herald reported that Santos's campaign expense reports from South Florida have holes and expenses that don't appear to add up. And a few days ago, Mother Jones published a report titled, We Tried to Call the Top Donors to George Santos's 2020 Campaign. Many Don't Seem to Exist. With Democratic voting rights attorney Mark Elias arguing that if that that's true. We can expect federal indictments soon and add it. This would be a serious crime and an easy one to prove and prosecute. And then COVID is finally over at least according to the federal government, with the White House yesterday making the announcement that it would be ending the COVID national emergency and public health emergency declarations on May 11th. And while you may agree or disagree with this statement, this is actually a huge deal, because with the White House announcing this, it will entirely restructure the federal government's response to the pandemic to treat it as endemic and upend policies that have been in place for the last three years. Right? Because even though reportedly more than 500 people in the U.S. are still dying from COVID on average each day, which for comparison's sake is around two times the number of daily deaths during a bad flu season, life for many is largely returned to normal. Most Americans have been vaccinated even Biden himself said the pandemic was over way back in September. And in fact, this announcement comes in part as a response to resolutions Republicans brought to the House floor last week that would immediately end the declarations with the White House arguing in a statement. An abrupt end to the emergency declarations would create widespread chaos and uncertainty throughout the healthcare system for states, for hospitals and doctor's offices, and most importantly, for tens of millions of Americans. Right, and that phase out plan does appear to make sense because ending these emergencies would change a ton of systems and benefits many Americans have come to rely on. With one of the most significant changes that'll affect Americans in their day-to-day -day lives is access to COVID tests, treatments, and vaccines that have been free throughout the pandemic. Right? Once the emergencies end, a very complex wave of changes will happen that will differ from person to person depending on their insurance, or lack thereof, and even possibly what state they live in. For example, people with private health insurance or Medicare coverage have been allowed eight free COVID tests a month, and insurers had to cover those tests, notably even if they were administered out of network. But once the emergency ends, some Americans are going to have to pay out of pocket. And those with private insurance, Medicare, or Medicaid will have to pay out of pocket for COVID treatments like Paxlovid. Though, very notably here, it's been reported that vaccines will still be covered for all those people covered by both private and 
and public insurance. But that might not be the case for people without insurance, who also are more likely to be most affected by rising costs for tests and treatments. And according to Jen Cates, a senior vice president at the Kaiser Family Foundation, when the emergency declarations end, states that opted to provide Medicaid coverage for tests, treatments, and shots will lose the federal funds that match costs at 100%. And adding, to me, that's the biggest issue for the general public to think about. The uninsured and underinsured have no guaranteed access to COVID vaccines, tests, or treatments. When it comes to the vaccines, those costs could be enormous. With Moderna and Pfizer having both said they might charge as much as $130 per dose of vaccine once the federal government stops paying. Understand, that is nearly four times what the feds pay for the products. And that transition to the private market could happen fairly soon, especially because Republicans have refused Biden's request that they put billions of dollars towards additional free COVID testing and shots to extend those efforts. And another key thing, we could also see a spike in the number of uninsured and underinsured Americans. Because that $1.7 trillion spending bill that was passed last year ends a rule that bans states from kicking people off of Medicaid. And so now that they can just remove people, millions of people are at risk of losing their coverage. And that's not even the last of what this announcement does. Ending the declarations is also going to set up a battle around immigration because the Biden administration says the move will bring an end to Title 42. Right? That's a Trump era public health measure that placed restrictions on border crossings and other migrant policies. Which, you know, we've talked about Biden previously tried to cut the program, but the Supreme Court kept it in place. And with what we're seeing, House Republicans are rejecting the White House's claim that the program would be terminated, arguing that it is not in fact tied to the public health emergency. And even that aspect isn't the end of it, which is also why the administration says that it needs to be done over the next few months or hospitals and nursing homes will be plunged into chaos. And that is where I'm going to end today's show. Thank you for watching and being a part of my daily dives into the news. My name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.